Today's episode of the Bill Simmons Podcast is brought to you by SeatGeek. That's our presenting sponsor since 1977. SeatGeek will help you find the best tickets for sporting events, music, wrestling, opera, you name it. For instance, March Madness coming up next week. I can't think of a smarter, easier way to get tickets to these games than SeatGeek. I've had SeatGeek on my phone for two years. It's by far the easiest way I've found to shop for the best tickets thanks to their revolutionary grading system. Buy and sell tickets in just two taps on your phone. Everything fully guaranteed. To try it out, download the SeatGeek app or go right to SeatGeek.com. We are also brought to you by two new Ringer podcasts that aren't actually new because they got spun off from Channel 33 in their own podcast feeds. The Masked Man Show and Achievement Oriented. If you love professional wrestling, subscribe to The Masked Man Show and listen to The Ringer's David Shoemaker break down the latest WWE storylines, pay-per-views, and more with a rotating cast of characters. And we have WrestleMania coming up, and we just had a very controversial fast lane pay-per-view on Sunday night. So you're going to want to listen to his thoughts on that. Get ready for WrestleMania, which has a chance to either underachieve or overachieve. I think expectations are actually low. Also, if you love video games... Subscribe to Achievement Oriented as hosts Ben Lindbergh and Jason Concepcion have the best and smartest conversations about video games. That's the Mass Man Show and Achievement Oriented available now for subscribers on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Overcast FM, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. And finally, we have Isaiah Thomas coming up. We taped this last Friday before the Celtics beat the Lakers and before... They had one of the five worst losses in Celtics history that were not a playoff loss. I can't even, I can't, I can't even, I, I'm just dumbfounded. I, mean, I actually went on a YouTube rabbit hole last night trying to figure out if there was ever a worse regular season Celtics loss. The ones I can remember, um, Grant Hill threw an alley-oop to Lindsey Hunter with like three seconds left on the clock when ML Carr was the coach. And it tied the game. And it was the first time I think anyone had ever seen the alley-oop play. With, it was right after they had switched the clock from one second to actually the one-tenth of a second situation. And that was during one of the lottery seasons. I remember that one being terrible. Magic hit a running bank shot to win a game in the Boston Guard, and that was really horrendous. Vince Carter, fall-away three-pointer during like his first or second year in the Garden, during, right when the Patino era was falling apart. I remember that one being horrendous. Um, and then... Nick Van, this was the one that I think was number one for me, and it's random. Nick Van Exel, the last year of the Boston Garden, Celtics are, you know, they're going to be an eight seed. They're not going to make the finals or anything. Last time the Lakers play in the Boston Garden, up one, like two seconds left, Nick Van Exel hits a fall away 28 footer to win the game. And that was the last Lakers Celtics game in the Garden. The Lakers won because that garbage shot by Nick Van Exel. I still hate him for it. Uh, I think that was the number one until the Celtic game where basically the game was over 17 times and somehow they blew it. Fumble away. Ridiculous three. It almost reminded me of those old commercials that they used to show uh, in the 80s. It was like the Fantastic Finishes NBA is Fantastic commercial that are still on YouTube. It's awesome. The best one was this one. Jeff Malone on the, on the Washington Bullets hit. Uh, somebody threw a pass in the left corner. And he ran down, chased it, full speed, set his feet, and just flung up a three, and it went in, and they won. It's the greatest shot anyone's ever made in the history of the NBA. But anyway, that that sun shot that the Kentucky kid hit yesterday, wow. I really hope that's not the difference in a one and a two and a three and a four seed for the Celtics because that's one of the worst losses, non-playoffs ever, in the history of the franchise. Anyway, Isaiah Thomas coming up. It's about 50 minutes and then right after that, we have Shea Serrano coming on because I saw John Wick 2 over the weekend. And it was unbelievable. And we have, there's a bunch of, of sub conversations springing out of it, including should I have taken my son to it? My son is nine. Should I have taken my son to John Wick 2? Am I a horrible parent? Guess what? Shea took his twins to John Wick 2. So we're going to talk about horrible panning, uh, parenting and where Keanu. Uh, how long he's had the Action Hero Championship belt, what's going to happen in John Wick 3, all that stuff. So spoilers galore. But if you care about John Wick, at the end of this Isaiah Thomas interview, which is really interesting, uh, get ready for that. All right, here we go. Eddie Vedder. It's 
late Thursday afternoon taping this with Isaiah Thomas, all-star, Celtics point guard. Last night you were in Boston, Massachusetts. Yes, sir. You played the Cavaliers of Cleveland. Yeah. You guys won the game. You had a couple big shots. It's a good game. It was a great game. LeBron hadn't lost in Boston in like four years. I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boston crowd doesn't like LeBron because he bitches for calls all the time. Yeah, they, they don't are, like that. I guess they don't. They, they don't they, like they that. They announced his name and it was a <laughs> and it was all booze. <laughs> he broke some hearts too. The 2012, which was like the last run of KG, Paul, and Ray, and three two lead Eastern Finals. LeBron, oh, yeah, that was game the game, six. best game of his life. Yeah, that, broke the crowd. He didn't smile or nothing. He was like he had a look in his eye. I remember that game. He broke the crowd. Uh, you seem like you're getting more of an edge as the season goes along. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Okay. That's fair. All right. What's the reason? I'm just tired of the doubt. Tired um, of the doubt? You've been doing great. I mean, it's, I, I don't know. I know I got to win. I got to win more. I got to get further in the playoffs for, I guess, people to lay off. But I, I'm just. Who are the people? Who's, <laughs> what's why? I mean, there's this? still, there's still people out there. Is this all the stuff that, like you can't play defense? Yeah, defensive yeah. Defensive rating is bad. Still, exactly. There's still, there's still people out there that have doubt and then say, I guess negative things, but I mean, I, I just I want to win, and I, I want to be one of the best to play. So I'm gonna just keep going. So the defense stuff that always gets brought up with you, it, it does, because I mean, you are five foot nine. Yeah, but it, it's a thing to where like it's always been. If a guy hits a shot over me, it's he's a defensive liability. If he hits a shot over a guy that's six one, it's oh that was just good good offense. It's right. Like, <laughs> It's, it's always something. That's where I'm trying to get to. My my defense when people throw this at me is that the point is to win the fourth quarter and win the game. And when you're on the four, the offense is always going to be better than whatever happens in the defense. Yes. So that's the advantage. I guess so. It is what it is, right? It is, yeah, it I is mean, what it is. If you're scoring and you're playing at this really, really high level, both statistically and just with the points you're creating per possession, stuff like that, that's still worth whatever else is going yeah. on. I mean, as long as we win the game, like you said, that's all that matters. I've noticed a couple things with you. One is that, one is you're definitely, I mean, not that you, you always had a chip on your shoulder, which we'll talk about, but it's definitely the chip's growing bigger. I can see it. But then also, teams are getting more physical with you. Yeah, they are. Especially. It's the, I noticed this with Steph Curry last year. The book all of a sudden was out on Steph Curry. I'll like, oh, just chip him, bang him. It's coming around picks, throwing elbow, yeah. throwing knee. So when did that start? It started the last few weeks, last month? Probably the last month. Yeah. And it's and it's been it's getting more physical in the fourth quarter. I mean, teams are trying to do I guess everything they can to to slow me down in the fourth quarter and, and, and one thing they're doing is is they're being more physical with me. I mean, they're hitting me off screens, they're making sure I hit the ground every time I hit the paint or things right. like that. So I, I just like any, I guess player you just got to adjust you guys got to figure out what they're doing and, and do something else well my fear is you're going to punch somebody i'm not okay I, good don't I'm punch not, anyone because I'm, I'm first of all you break your hand you get suspended <laughs> and then that's going to cost you some money so i i don't like to give back any money yeah because there's been a couple times i could see the red coming out of yeah, your ass i gotta i gotta <laughs> hold back a little bit because i know what, what what guys are trying to do have you been in a basketball fight ever when i was younger yeah not not high school, college. Nah, no, they, no sanctioned game. No, I, I didn't want to get suspended the next day. And you know, nowadays they're breaking it up anyway. Yeah, Jalen always called it the hold me back fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold me back. That's what it is. That's what it is. For you sure. had a good one though last week when you came. You came flying in with the finger point. I was like, oh god, hey, they somebody getting his way. Point, they thought I was pointing a gun. Yeah, what was that? I was just pointing. I have. I You're just mad with, with with two fingers, and they. Wanted to blow it up more than it was, but I was upset. I was yeah. upset with him pushing me. My fear with you since the day that the Celtics acquired you, this is my favorite team, I've never seen anybody go into the lane and get bounced and more different. Like, you're going into the basket support. You're flying, You're falling, you know, you're going sideways. I, I always think you're going to, like, break your wrist or whatever, but you've clearly learned how to fall. You're yeah. like a stuntman. So when did that start? I guess when I was younger, because I always been the smallest guy on the court. I always been the guy that goes in the paint and gets knocked down. So I had to figure out a way to withstand all that. And I mean, there's some times where it hurts more than others, but for the most part, I I, I guess I'm pretty good at falling. 
We went to, was it last year when you got hurt? Yeah, that was no, that was my or two years ago. Two years ago, yeah, when yeah. I got traded. That was the worst fall I've ever had. So that was what was that one against the Miami Heat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dwayne Hassan Wade. Whiteside, Dwayne Wade. Yeah. Oh, Dwayne Wade. Yeah, that was it. Was you like, know his history with the Celtics. Yeah. He's taken out a butt. He broke Rondo's elbow. Yeah. Yeah. They, that's why when he comes to Boston, he gets booed too. The yeah. Celtic fans remember all that stuff. I know. Yeah. They, the, so the stuntman thing, that's like you're playing pickup. Yeah. You're 12, just, 13, guys knocking you down. Me playing with older guys when I was younger and always getting knocked down. I had to figure out a way to to fall the right way, I guess you could say, and, and get back up. When did you learn the, um, I mean, you have so many different moves on the drives. When did you learn the little step back in the paint? Because it seems like that's gotten better in the last year. Um, that's just something I guess I figured out by watching film. I might have did it on accident one time or, or a few times, and then it was a move that was effective. And yeah. Um, the last few summers, I just started to work on it more and more. And it's, it's a move that gets me separation. And, and with me being small, all I need is a little bit of separation to get, get my shot off or to make a play for somebody else. And those are the things I try to work on. Because people, people always ask me, like, did you know Isaiah was going to score 30 points a game? Like, you're watching all these games. And it's like the two things that seem different, one is that, that shot in the paint, which I don't feel like you had mastered yet until yeah. this year, the little blooper shot. Yeah. It's like basically unstoppable because you're falling back. Yeah. It's a little like, even though you're like 15 inches smaller than the Dirk shot, when Dirk started to master exactly. that little foul line fall away, it was just create like that one inch. But then the other thing, you probably don't want to talk about this, but they don't call you for the right handed push off anymore because you're a star now. I they guess used to so. call you for that. Yeah, I guess. I guess they used so. to call they, you for the shove me, off. <laughs> they give me those now. I you guess get the you I, get the all star respect. Yeah. It, it doesn't seem like it, but I guess now that you say that, they yeah, don't, yeah, you they get it now. Call it. And then you have long arms, and I think big guys always forget. A, they always forget who's left-handed. Yeah, that, that's the. That's a big part. advantage. That's a big advantage, guys. Even for myself, guarding a left-handed guy is it, tough to guard because you're yeah. so used to guarding right-handed players. Especially you get tired. Yeah. I used to hate when I. I'm retired now, but when I used to play. <laughs> Lefties, especially like if you're on like your fourth or fifth game oh. or second hour of playing, you just you're kind of thinking. forget and they're going by you. Yeah. But and then you have you'll come on the right sometimes, but you got the long arm. You can do the reverse layups, which the big guys never see coming every time. They always think you're going yeah because you're shorter. You're going right to the closer yeah, just, side of the rim and you go under. I just try to m maneuver around them. What about the three point shot? Um, you just that's just practice because you that's definitely just reps repetition I, I i worked on my shot a lot this summer i mean i do every summer but this this year i worked on a lot of off the dribble threes and mm. and and getting to my shot quicker when i have a, a live dribble so i know most of my my points and most of my shots come off not catch and shoot but most of them come off me handling the ball or coming off pick and roll and shooting so i worked a lot on that and and i wanted to raise my my shooting percentages and, and become more efficient. And luckily that's happened this year. How did, can you tell the difference between a heat check and this is just what you do? I'm um, probably the deeper the shot. <laughs> if I hit two in a row, that third one's going that third one. <laughs> <laughs> and From the, 30? The, the other team, the other team knows it. So I gotta, I gotta shoot it a little deeper. Yeah. So the Celtics acquired you. It was like a fluke. It was. You, you you somehow end up in Phoenix, and they have multiple point guards. And it was one of those things like every year one NBA team tries something, Good and you know it's not going to work. I even before the season starts, you're like, ah, what are they? Like Orlando was like that this year. It's like, yeah, we're getting all these big guys, and we're going to play Aaron Gordon at the three, and it's like that's not going to work. Gonna work. And then now that's like, oh, Aaron Gordon's a four. We should you know. But when they did that with the point guards in Phoenix. And you have you and Dragic and Bledsoe, and you're all out there at the same time. I'm not against the small ball thing because you guys do it with Marcus and Avery yeah. sometimes or Rozier. But all you guys need the ball. All of us. It just it sounded good. Yeah. Like when when they, I guess presented it, it sounded good, but it just it just it didn't work. Like you said, all of us needed the ball to be effective. I mean, I was more of a I could play off the ball a little more than those two guys, but yeah, for the same. The same thing, everybody needed the ball to be who they were, and it just didn't work. Why do you think it didn't work out in Sacramento? Because I've heard various – I can give like you that. all the reasons I've actually heard. 
Give them to me. I've heard that um, the stars that were there at the time wanted a point guard who was more pass first. You agree with that or disagree? I've heard that. Yeah. I've heard that they just underestimated you because they weren't, weren't very competent. That too. Um, and I heard that they just liked, they just wanted to get like somebody like Darren Carlson and that. Yeah. They just, they didn't want me. I mean, that's what it came but down to. You played to. well for them though. I feel that's like the part I, I don't get. Pretty well. And, and especially that last year I was there with coach Mike Malone. He was a big fan of mine and he was a, a big supporter of mine, but it was every year they were bringing somebody else in to somewhat replace me or, yeah. or send me to the bench and me have a bench role. And I just, I outplayed whoever they brought in every year. And then it came to a point where it was like, you guys are just, you, obviously you don't want me. Right. Because, or you don't want me to be, to outplay whoever you bring in. And that's, that's not me. I mean, I, I, I love competition. And if I feel like I'm better than somebody, um, I'm going a, I'm to a show you how I feel. So when the Celtics made that trade, I, I mean, I didn't know enough about the situation. I'm like, was he like a head case there? Like, so, you know, go on the internet, start Googling stuff, yeah. going on message boards. And all the Kings fans liked you. Yeah, the King, the, the, they, the they, city. They were, they were all like, why, we don't know why we traded yeah, this guy. The city, the, the, the fans, the community, it was, they, they loved me since day one. They, they, they opened, they welcomed me with open arms and it was, it was tough when I did leave, like the city, they, they heard about it. I mean, they, they, they told them how they felt. And then it was just something I had to move on. It was, it was a battle I was fighting that they obviously wanted somebody else, which that is fine. So you go to Phoenix and you end up in the Celtics and you get kicked out of the first game. First game. It which I think was in it, Phoenix, it, right? No, no. The first oh, in LA, was, yeah, yeah. He was playing the Lakers. Yeah. First game, it was probably, I think it was like five minutes left in the fourth quarter. We was playing pretty well. They gave me a double T. <laughs> I remember it was a quick one. Quick one? Yeah. I remember the referee, the next time we seen him, he, he apologized because it was too quick. It was yeah. like, I don't have the reputation of, of arguing or getting technicals. And then I got thrown out and I remember going in the back and Brian do our strength coach is like, Celtics fans are going to love you. And I didn't, I, I thought that people were going to be mad at me. I'm <laughs> no, like, no, no. this is my first game. They're going to kill me. Yeah. He's like, they are going to love you. And I didn't understand why until I got to the garden and was able to play. There's some dudes on the Celtic team that tap into things that Boston fans love. Yes. I think Marcus is a great example. Uh, he's, the casual Celtic fans, are, uh, Marcus. Are, what was he? The casual he, fan, though, with Marcus. Would that's be like, what I mean. He's, casual fan doesn't get it. The, the fans understand. that actually watch the games, Marcus is our dude. He's amazing. Love that guy. He always makes one play. He can, he oh, can be 0 no for 15. What. Maybe yesterday he took a charge in no the Cavs what. game. Two of them. Yeah. Back to back. Yeah. It's always something. Rebound in traffic. It's something Got you a can't, steal. You can't ever underestimate him. He's always going to surprise you in some way. Is he talked the most on the team on the court, or, is, or do you have nah, the title? No, he, he's somewhat quiet. Yeah? I mean, he talks, but he, for the most part, he doesn't talk unless somebody's, somebody's talking and to him. Since somebody gets yeah, going? Yeah, yeah, Or he got to stop somebody, then he'll start talking a little bit. It seems like you guys annoy people. You have a lot of mini feuds Oh the Celtics yeah. team. I mean, I, I annoy people on the offensive end. Smart and Avery and Jay, they annoy people on the defensive end. Yeah. We're just that, that team that's kind of been counting out our whole career. Like every guy, individual guy, has been counting out at some point in their career. And chip on the shoulder chip team. On the shoulder. Yeah. But let's see, Washington, that guy, that's, that's a feud now. Yeah. That's a feud. Seven game series against Washington, I think we'll. That would be a good one. That would be a good one. Toronto, I don't feel like there's a lot of love there. There isn't. That would be a good one. Atlanta, that's been written about. There's no love. Yeah, we need we need that. There's back. the point guard. There's point guard. He said, she said stuff with the yeah. He's lying. the German no, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's I, whatever. Uh, Houston, that was a good one. That was. We got a few. Teams the only two that, times, two times a year, but that was yeah, yeah. But that was that was a good. That was both times stuff happened. Yeah. So we got a few teams that we battle against. Clippers, I feel like could get there. You play them Monday. Yeah. Because the Clippers, everybody, nobody gets along with them. Yeah, so it's like really, it's like your destiny. Nobody, to, nobody really likes yeah, those Yeah, Blake, guys. Blake's kind of almost like belongs to the Celtics because he he, yeah, he rubs yeah. everyone the wrong way yeah. for some reason. But Why do some players do that? I don't know. I was because I have Clipper season tickets, even though I'm a Celtic fan. 
But I, I'm always amazed by it. the other teams just go out of their way to, to, to try to antagonize Blake. There's certain yeah, guys they that try to get in the, their heads. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't got to guard them, but yeah. I, I mean, I watch a lot of basketball, and I see the guys be going at them. Go at them big time. So you have a five game road trip. Yeah, big big road trip. What's your process on a road trip? Take it one game at a time. Um, try to attack every game. What do you do way. on the road? I go to movies. Yeah, hang I, out? I, I try to. I mean, I go to movie theater across the street. I might go some tonight, but for the most part, I be in my room. I got league pass on my. You got league pass in your iPad. Yeah, and computer? yeah, my computer. I, I watch that, and then when. They got national TV games. I'm I'm a fan of the game. I love I love watching all. So you're studying. Are you studying people or are you just studying watching? Studying and, as a and fan? watching. So who are your favorite teams this year? My to watch. Team, I mean, the Warriors are always fun to watch. Right. The Warriors. Um, I got friends on the Clippers, so I watch them. Um, but like I said, I, I like to watch everybody. The Warriors, huh? You guys match up pretty well with them. Yeah. The weirdest thing about this Celtics team is they. They can hang with the Warriors and the Cavs, who yeah. are the two toughest teams. And you actually, you guys match up well with Cleveland. Yeah, we usually play well. And against. then there's other teams that aren't as good of a matchup. But and then we, and then we. we yeah, like I, I think Washington. I I need to see a Celtics victory yeah, over we Washington. Haven't played you need well. to play well. Against we them. we play well one time at home, but we haven't played well on the road against those guys. Big back, but they have backcourt with size. They have. A small Porter's playing really well. Yeah, he's Gortat's shots. killed the Celtics since he was on Orlando. Yeah. I don't know what it is. They play well. They get up against us too. So we just gotta. Yeah, but I think we play them one more time. Maybe we gotta get. Are they gonna dress in all black for that one? You think? I hope they do. I hope. They do. <laughs> I was against that. I thought that was a late. Yeah, that, that Come was on. a call for. What but, are we like a junior high? But that's I guess what they wanted to do. This is good. You guys are becoming like the villains of the league. Yeah, nobody likes playing against us though. I mean, we play hard. So right. Like, you know, NBA teams, they, they're, most of them are a little casual. We play, we, we get down and dirty. I mean, we got guys that don't care. Who's your favorite guy to go against? In the NBA? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I always you don't like want the to... big games. I mean, I like going against Cleveland. I like playing against the Warriors. Those are... The games the whole world is watching. So. Yeah, but I, all right, let me. I'm gonna get this answer out of you, even though you're being put. Okay, I like I like I like playing against guys I'm friends with. So the Seattle guys, Jamal Crawford, when Nate Robinson right, was now we're lead. talking. That was gonna be Jason my first Terry, guess. He's, he's older, but he still plays for the Bucks. Like I like playing against friends. So even Chris Paul, he's a good friend of mine. I like I like going against guys I'm I'm close with. Who were the point guards drafted ahead of you in your draft? Let's go there. I bet I bet one of those guys is on the list. I mean, Kyrie is, was number one. Norris Cole was – he was drafted ahead of me. Um, there's I'm a, there's amazed a, you can't rattle this off. I, I would have thought you would be able to I rattle really off all 59. Really no, nah, I really don't care about it no more. Um, but <laughs> I don't believe that. There's a lot of people that – a lot of guys, guards that were drafted, a few guards drafted ahead of me that aren't even in the NBA no more, so – We'll be back to the Isaiah Thomas interview in one second. First, I want to tell you about the blacktux.com. They've made looking great for a wedding or a special event. The easiest that it's ever been. With high-quality rental suits and tuxedos delivered to your doorstep, the Black Tux is giving guys a new way to rent. The Black Tux offers free home try-on so you can see the fit and feel the quality of the suit months before your event. The best part, it's completely done online. No trips to the tux shop required. No creepy tailors breathing all over you. The blacktux.com lets you create your look or choose from tons of stylish selected outfits starting at just $95. They're modern, made from fine Italian, will absolutely the highest quality in the rental market. Any issues and their expert customer care team will give your get, will have your back every step of the way. My daughter made fun of me this weekend in the car that I was bad at these reads and it really hurt my feelings and now I think she's in my head. After ordering, your suit will arrive 14 days before your event. That's a full two weeks to try it on and make sure everything fits. And if anything is less than perfect, the Black Tux will send you a free replacement right away. After you're done, drop your rental back in the mail. It's that easy. Shipping is free both ways. Seriously, it's that easy. Get started right now. Visit theblacktux.com slash BS to get $20 off your purchase. Experience a new way to rent tuxedos. Again, that's theblacktux.com slash BS. Back to Isaiah Thomas. So who, do you have the Seattle championship belt right now for players? The Washington area? 
Ah, uh, no. That, I mean, it probably Who is it? Well, you like, made the All Star team. Did any other Washington guys make the right. All Star team? They didn't. You had the I championship mean, belt. That's it. it it's still you won going, it. It's still. You got to make Jamal it. Jamal Crawford and Jason Terry are still the. I'd see Jamal Crawford at All Star weekend. You're right. I mean, they haven't been All Stars, but Jason Terry's won an NBA championship, six man of the year award. He's my age. You're right, and he's still in the NBA. I got. I, I got to pay homage to my. I, my my older all due guys. respect i get it you got you got to email jamal crawford and was like i did simmons's podcast he reminded me that i have the seattle championship because <laughs> i made the all-star maybe, team. maybe soon <laughs> i agree how many years jamal's like what That's, six seven years older than you no 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 i'm 20 i just turned 28 jamal jamal's like 35 oh, now he's yeah. 36 so he's eight years older he's really the one of the original heat check guys oh for sure yeah every shot's a heat check so when you when was the first time you played against him? You must have like you when must I have was, idolized him. Probably when I was fourteen or fifteen when I first met him and got to play against him and, and build a relationship with him and it's been good ever since. So I've seen him. I mean, he's a legend back home. Yeah, I was gonna say. Everybody wants to be like Jamal Carver back home. Where do we stand on Markel Fultz? Number one. Does he pick. count as a Washington guy? Yeah, he he, he lives. He's in not there. from there though, he's right? He's not there now. He's he's from DC, I think. But yeah, he's he's special. Number one pick for sure. How much watch? How many Washington games you watch? As when you can. When I can. He's special. I've watched a few because I don't know if you're aware of this, but the Celtics might have a high draft pick. Yeah, and if they get him, go get him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go get him. He's he does some stuff. He, when when I played with him this summer, when he first got on campus and I first played with him, like after we played with him, I'm like he's an NBA player. Like he has it. He has it. He has it. He has it. He's special. The thing that – see, the point guard position has really evolved over the last 20 years, right? Because everyone does this AAU circle now. Yeah. And whoever really has the ball from the get-go, that guy has the ball all the time. Like 25 years ago, I think he's a two, he's a two guard. Yeah. They just try to turn him in now in Houston. But now people see somebody like him and they're like, well, he should have the ball in his hands. Yeah. That's but it, it does seem like we're headed toward a world where there's going to be too many point guards. Even the Celtics have three guys who are technically point guards. It probably is. I mean, everybody, they're, they're making everybody a point guard. Yeah, or at least somebody like who can be a best, creator. Yeah, like the best, most likely the best player who can create and score is the point guard. Right. But we, it seems like we're going to see less Clay Thompson types as we keep evolving. Yeah, probably. The guy who's like, you know what I'm going to do? You guys dribble. I'm just going to run around yeah, screens and get me the wants ball. To do that, no nobody's going to get that. You're not going to get the ball. Yeah, nobody wants to do that. But if if I could shoot like Clay Thompson, I would want to do that. <laughs> Make it easy as possible. Uh, the Washington thing. Jamal Crawford. Jason Terry. You. There's like two other guys though we didn't mention. Zach Levine. Um, oh, Zach Levine. Marvin Williams, Spencer Haas. Um, our list has gotten shorter the last few years, but I wonder. Do you think the fact that the Sonics Avery Bradley? I thought he was. He's from Washington. Yeah, we're from the same neighborhood, Tacoma, Washington. Oh, I knew this. You yeah. you guys knew each other from way back. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we, I mean, we got a few guys. Did you care about the Sonics? Yeah, I love the Sonics. Hopefully. How do we get them back? Adam Silver. Hopefully he makes, I think it's going to happen in the I next three years. Too. I, I think, think there's going to be an expansion team. I, I hope. Everybody I talk to that's been in, around the NBA, they always say they missed that Seattle trip. I was thinking if it was like a Seattle-Vancouver. Either or. If it, both of those came back, yeah. then that's like I've the never swing. been to Vancouver, but they say it's, it's, it's beautiful. beautiful. People who... I know people who worked in the league. They said lo like losing Vancouver and Seattle was like a tragedy for uh, for the road trips. Like that was like the yeah, best. A, it's like a five year stretch where yeah, that was like the best road trip yeah, was the. Because there's a there's a few road trips that. Yeah. What happens when you go back now? I live there in the summer, so. Yeah. It's all love. Yeah, but now you're more famous than you were a year oh, ago, I'm two years ago. I'm definitely more famous. That that Boston thing is is. He's yeah. gotten me a lot more famous. So yeah, we seventeen titles. It's a famous franchise. Exactly. They're on TV a lot. So they know me everywhere now. Yeah. So what happens? People treat you differently? I mean they do. They I mean ask for autographs, pictures. I mean I'm like before before I got to Boston, 
if you were like a real fan of mine, you would know who I am if I'm walking the street. Yeah. But like a, a average person is, I'm, I blend in with everybody, so I don't look like a basketball player. But now it's like, it's hard to walk places. Every, I mean, a lot of people know who I am, and that's yeah. But you that's, like that? Though. That's that's for, from being in Boston. But you can blend in too, which is the good. Oh, thing. I can just put in. a hat on. I, I Nobody would even notice. I, I know how to make it work, but yeah. a lot more people noticed me than before I was a Celtic. When do you think the Boston fans fell in love? Um, because it's crazy now. Because you know, I it I, is. I grew up there and I still have friends there, and they were somewhere when you started going on your December streak. It started to creep toward the, and then all oh, of a yeah. sudden you something snapped, and now it's like the jerseys are everywhere. Yeah, and it's, it's started like to it's been love since I've gotten here, but it's crazy now. Like it, it is sometimes in the games, I just sit back and and look. And I'm like, man, this like this is what you dream of. Like, yeah, as a little boy, kids wearing your jerseys, adults wearing your jersey, and then like when they chant MVP when I'm at the free throw line, like that's it doesn't even seem real, and and I. I'm just trying to stay in the moment right now. I, I appreciate all the love and, but like with, without my teammates and, and Brad giving me the opportunity to be who I am, it wouldn't be no me right now. Or it wouldn't be where it, where the level it is right now. Did All-Star throw you off at all? So that could be a whirlwind. You have to do the Saturday, you do the Sunday. I, I mean, All-Star You didn't fun. sleep one of those all days? All-Star's fun, it's just a lot. It's yeah. a lot, you got appearances, you got, events you got to go to and then the last thing you're worried about is the game that's the crazy thing right before you go you're, you you think you're going to be worried about the game but you have so much so many other things you have to do before the game and that's like the last thing on your mind well the good thing is none of the players in the game really care about the game anymore so it's not I like I, I wish that would change i hope God. that changes in the in what the do future. we have to do i don't know i don't know i think when every i watched all-star games growing up you knew when the end of the third quarter, fourth quarter, it got serious. Guys were trying to win. Yes. And the last two years I've been in it, it's been like, it's been like a just getting cardio. It's going up and down. What's weird to me is, what, let's say you played in a pickup game in Washington, and there was like ten NBA players in the game. All of you would try harder than yeah. It would the be harder. Game. It would be. I think if maybe, maybe if LeBron went hard. Everybody else would follow suit because they'd be like, "Dang, if he's going hard, right? We gotta go hard." I think that was the thing with, not to put it on LeBron. I just know everybody watches. You follow the off the dog, yeah, yeah. Like when Kobe, if Kobe went hard, everybody had to. Right. Same thing with Michael Jordan. Westbrook's over there going, "I'm always going to go hard. I don't care where you guys yeah, are doing." Yeah, he has I'm, one motor. So oh he, yeah, he I can't. He don't, he I don't can't know how scale to be cool. back. Yeah, he don't know how to be cool. But I think of those type of guys went hard for a certain amount of time and then everybody else will follow suit what if every player in the game had to bet five hundred thousand dollars of their own money uh, for the winner i feel like people would play guys harder would be at that point full court guys would yeah be talking on defense and <laughs> guys wouldn't want to come out the game i know that <laughs> i i'm bummed because i used to love the all-star game because as you said whatever it was an exhibition for three games but like about nine minutes left it was really a nice snapshot of the league. Yeah. And it would be like, all right, here are our five, but we're trying to win now. Here are our five best. Here are the five best on the other side. And it would actually became basketball. Yeah. And it was always fun for me to see, I wonder who the five guys are. Who's, what are they going to do? And now it's like the moment's gone. And now it's like. You guys just, are all friends now, too. Yeah. That's I mean, the other things thing. Things change. You're all buddies you know, now. Time change. Everybody's the, close. The bird of magic days. Well, you're not. Fortunately, you have. You still kept some minor enemies, yeah. semi enemies. The, like, so you're you're in the locker room with John Wall, and your teams don't oh, like I'm, each I'm, other. I'm, What's I'm that friends like with John though? So it, it's when we're on the court, we're battling, but when we're off the court, we're cool. I've been cool with him since high school, so none of that extra stuff goes off the court with us. Okay, Do you, but when we're on the court, I'm don't talk to me. <laughs> I'm trying to win. I don't know you right now. That's Were how you following the Durant Westbrook stuff or no? I mean, the whole world is. The whole world is. Hopefully, one of them talks to each other. I don't know. It'll happen before 2050. It definitely will. 2049, something like that. Were you in on the recruiting trip for him? Yeah, with Durant. To the Hamptons? Yeah. The Hamptons. That was a nice place. Yeah. Never been. The Hamptons nice. It's like, a, like Cape Cod, but even that was, nicer. That was nice. Yeah. So you guys went and you, you told him all 
all the secrets for how the yeah, Celtics played the Warriors. Everything. Yeah, and then we he just took the info like an FBI everything. agent. We told he probably had it on record too. We told them all. <laughs> we tried it. We tried to get him, but I guess that's what it takes. So wait, I mean, you literally said when we play Golden State. I mean, this we is how do we this, beat this, this, this. this. How we beat Cleveland. When we play, when we when we beat those guys, and I mean, they probably don't care about it no more though. Did you think leaving that you had a chance or no? I really thought we did. I thought maybe if we had Hal, Al Horford in that meeting and he said he was already a Celtic, I think that would have gave us a little edge. I think that would have put us over the top. Did you get to meet Tom Brady at least? Oh yeah. That was the, the, the OG. best part about it. I, yeah. I, know, I know Kevin Durant, so I've talked to him, and I, I know him. But Tom Brady, that was the best part about being there. The GOAT. Yeah, greatest of all time. What, what was that? What do you remember from the Tom Brady meeting? This everything. is just for me. I don't even care about the people listening nah, to the Nah, everything. Like, Tom Brady, when mean. you walked in, you just felt his presence. Well, he's tall, right? You didn't he's expect tall. him to be like 6'5". Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't know he was that tall. I didn't yeah. Know. You, you just felt his presence, and you felt... There was greatness in the room, and it wasn't basketball. Did players. he have the rings on? Any of the rings? No, no. He was he was stylish, but he didn't have nothing done. He was just, I guess, being Tom Brady. I mean, can you, this the city of Boston? Can you imagine another city bringing a star athlete from another team in the city for a recruitment meeting? No, that's that sums up Boston. Like when me. I seen Tom, I'm like, how the hell did y'all get him to come here? Like. <laughs> I was surprised. That's when I went in. Like, yeah, we're getting, them. we're getting. Right. You know, do you notice when you're at the uh, the home games? Do you look like Belichick was at that Cleveland game? Do you yeah, notice I went there? to shake his hand. That was my first time in the timeout. I went, I went over there and shook his hand and shook his wife's hand. And um, like I said, I'm a fan of sports. So when I see guys like that, I think Edelman was at the game a yeah. couple nights ago. Oh, Edelman's I, available. I gave him, I gave him a head nod. Like I, I. I like to interact with those type of guys. Yeah. Explain the Floyd Mayweather thing to me. Because he's he's now like the number one Celtics fan. He is. He got Celtics gear too. He got, he got, he's going he's like traveling on the road and stuff. Yeah. Um, that's my guy. Uh, a close friend of mine. I met him. Um, I think it was a year before I went out for the draft. I went to go watch him work out in Las Vegas at his boxing gym. And then he knew who I was. He was a fan of basketball. So he knew who I was. And. We met through mutual people, and then it was all she wrote after that. We we support each other. We he's a good friend of mine, a mentor that um, gives me advice on how to be great. So like even meeting like Tom Brady and sitting down with Kobe Bryant, like those type of guys, I want to be around because I want to one day hopefully be great and, yeah. and learn from those guys. How many games has he come to? He comes a couple a year. I mean, he comes a couple Seems in like Boston. Seems like it's more than that. He comes a couple in Boston. He'll be in Miami because he lives in Miami, too. He comes to those, two. He'll be in the L.A. games. Like, oh, yeah, he'll yeah, definitely yeah, be there. Yeah, yeah. So he comes to a few. Or if we play in New York, he always stops. He, I like when he comes with his, his, I guess, their bodyguards. Oh, yeah, those are the big guys. And they stand behind his seats at the Clipper games. Like yeah. I, I don't know if you've been to a Clipper game, but Floyd's not in danger at a Clipper game. I don't think definitely it's not. the most mellow crowd on the planet. Yeah, definitely not. But yeah, Floyd, it's it's a scene when he comes. I don't it's know a, how he gets a, the court sides. It's a scene everywhere he goes. He, he's he's only sitting court side. He I know. even came when I played in Phoenix. When I played in Sacramento, he was at the games. That's probably easier to get the court sides in Sacramento. Definitely in Sacramento. Yeah. And, so is he on the bandwagon? Does he think we can beat? Yeah. How many is we like he's him on the fan. team? All right. He's does he does he break champ. down like afterwards? Like man, I was worried he, he, about. Yeah, he, he'll try to break some stuff down, but sometimes I'll be like, okay, champ. All right, it's, uh, I got it. What about Boogie? You friends with him at this point? Or? Yeah, 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 that's my guy. Boogie Were you surprised him. that he basically got stolen for? Uh, yeah, I was a non lottery pick, especially and, right after the All Star game. I was I was surprised they, but that's. Sacramento for you. <laughs> the people can't see you smiling right now. <laughs> the people know I love Sac. I love Sac is, man, they they love me. I love them. It's just. All right, don't, you have to rave about them this much. Like I'm just saying, I do, right, I do love Sac. Now you're Sac. making me jealous a little no, bit. They, they, they show All me right. a lot of love. They but Boston's have. the best, but Sacramento's fine. Boston's on a different level, <laughs> so, 
when you talk about Boston, it, I don't know if there's any organization you can talk about when you talk about Boston. The boogie thing, does he have his revenge at some point? Does it happen in New Orleans? Does he have to be on a certain type of team? Um, he'll get his revenge. I don't know where. What's the be. right offense for him? Give him the ball and get out the way. <laughs> he's unguarded. He's unstoppable. I mean, you can't do nothing with that guy. He's he can shoot threes now. You can't. You got to double him in the post. He can pass. He can do it all. So I don't know if New Orleans is the right place for him, but I mean, we'll all find that out. Did you think there was a chance that he might end up on the Celtics? I mean, you always heard the rumors. You just never knew if they were true or not. What's the most What's the most misunderstood thing about him? Um, that it, 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 he really is a good guy. Like he, people judge him because how he acts on the court, which he just wears his emotions out of his sleeve, and you can't. I mean, you can't fault him for that. Yeah, he, he needs to cut down on his technicals and, and things like that. But overall, like, DeMarcus is a good guy. And he's, he's, one, of, he's one of my good friends. Um, he's the total opposite off the court. Like, yeah. joking around, always clowning on people, always. He'll light up a room. He'll, he'll make a room laugh. And, and that's the, the side people don't see. The way it seems to be explained is he has very few people that he, he is a Small inner circle, right? Very few people that he trusts. Yeah, he don't. But trust if you're in the circle, him. you're in. You're good. Because right. I'm out. He knocked me out. Uh, He's well, mad he, that I didn't vote him for All NBA last year, and he blocked me on Twitter, and I'm just out. That's uh, it. Yeah, once, he was once, my guy. Once you're out, you're out. He was my guy. He said, <laughs> on national TV, Jalen and I yelling boogie. Yeah, he might. That was my dude. That. You might have to send him that. Once you're out, you're once out. Once you're out, I'm out. I have you're no chance of, of coming but back. If you're in there. Yeah. He's going to ride with you to the end. I'm yeah. in there. In my in my defense. There was maybe. times I wasn't in there, though. Yeah? What'd you do? Because I'm, I'm the guy that well, you, they looked to. I had to be the guy that just tell them. When when guys didn't, I guess, were scared to talk to him. Or, I didn't back down from him. But he respects me. I respect him. And that's, we always had that relationship. It seems like he could be a difficult teammate if it was the wrong type of teammate, right? Somebody if soft, he's if somebody is soft is if, in trouble. If you're soft, you you can't be on that team. Right. You can't. He you know, he he you walk in this room and you're soft, he you know, he he's gonna pick on you. <laughs> but I mean that's just him. It's not a bad thing. What does that mean for a coach? Either you stand up to him or you're you done. You gotta stand up to him. I he respects when people stand up to him. I know that. Mike Malone, he respected him. Yeah. From day one. From day one. And Mike Malone, I mean, earned his respect. He didn't back down. And not saying they were fighting, but he, he just said, this. I'm the coach of the player. Well, it seems like a little bit what happened with Cleveland. LeBron didn't seem like he respected David Blatt for whatever reason. Ty Lue came in. Henry. Ty Lue stood up to him, respected exactly. him. I, I don't know that situation, but it seemed like that from, from afar. You know, I was looking. There was some list of the shortest players in the history of the NBA and people like basically 5'10 and under. There's only been, I think, 12 guys that were 5'9 and under, and you were by far the most successful of them. But it, when, I, when I watch you play, I don't think like you're 5'9. I don't feel 5'9. Yeah, I mean, you got long arms too, so yeah, it's like too, you're really like six feet. Like when, I, when I'm out there, I, I feel like I'm just as tall as everybody else. Like kids always ask me that too. Like, how do you do it? How do you? When I'm out there, I don't see height. Right. I, I, I promise you, I feel like I'm... I'm just as tall as those guys. When, how tall were you when you were like 15, 16? Same height, probably like 5'7". <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Because there's this picture of you and Kevin Love, which I'm sure you saw. Okay, okay. Yeah, I was small. All right. You looked, you looked like you were I was, a baby. I looked like I was probably 10 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wasn't, like, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't have the weight on me either. Because I'm trying to think, I'm, you know, I, I love. I was 15 then. Yeah, you're like 15 or 16. I love the NBA forever. And I'm trying to think of like smaller players that could exert their will offensively. One of the guys we had in the Celtics when, you know, going game season tickets, Tiny Archibald. Yeah. And it was after he had torn his Achilles in Buffalo. But he was still good. He was like 85, 90% of what he used to be. That dude could get to any spot he wanted. He, he was probably like six feet tall, but he was lefty like you. Yeah. And uh, 
was just a floor jet, but would bounce off people like you did go in traffic. And then Iverson is the only other one that I feel like uh, I, you, you know, you guys had different styles, but the same kind of Iverson, first of all, was not, they always said he was like six feet. There's no way he was no, six he feet. Probably, He's like, he, he, he probably yeah, I was going to say five ten. Tallest. Yeah. I'm going to say five ten. Yeah. But same thing. We'd just go in like a battering ram, yeah. bounce off dudes, he was keep getting up. So was he an inspiration? Inspiration. Yeah. That's who I wanted to be like. He was the best to do it pound for pound. Have you, have you met him? Has he reached out yeah. to you? Yeah. I talk, Alan Iverson texted me last night after the game. Oh, so you're like, this yeah, is, this is huge. All right. I'm telling you, I, I, I man, the, the, the great players, if I'm able to reach out to him and, and talk to him, I'm, I don't got no ego. I, I want to I wanna pick, pick their brains. And Alan Iverson is a guy I, I looked up to since I was a little boy. I wanted to be like, and for me to be able to build a relationship with him the last couple of years. It's been amazing. I mean, once he told me I was cut from the same cloth as him, and he, re I remind me of him. Like nobody can tell me nothing. So when I I checked out that like, your background, you went, you grew up in Washington, but then you went to prep school in I went Connecticut. To prep school in Connecticut, South Kent, which is the opposite. It's about as far away as you can get from yeah. Washington. And what was, was that like? It was horrible. I you hated like it? it. I mean, the basketball. Part of it was great because the, the competition was really good. But, I mean, I was across the country away from my family. All boys school. You had to wear. You was in all boys school? Yeah, you had to oh, wear no. slacks, blazer, tie every day. Yeah. It was tough. It was different from what I'm used to. But when I look back at it, it was the best thing that's ever happened to me. Was it one year or two? Two. Two years. It made me grow up. made me understand how to take care of my responsibility. Was it all boys school? Oh, uh, it was bad. <laughs> it was horrible. Did you guys at least get to go like a dance with the sister school? Yeah, you can, yeah, they had dances on the weekends. So they, they were all the girls schools and boys schools and meet. So, but I, I didn't go to those. You didn't go to them? I was so depressed. Like I, I, I stayed in you my stayed room. In your room. I stayed in the gym. I was so maybe that was good for you. You're working no, on your it, game it was, instead it was, of. It was great for me. I just hated it at the time. Yeah, I was 16 years old, away from home. Only friends I had was on the basketball team. It was bad. How'd you end up there? My grades. I needed. I needed to you fix get them my up. my grades to in order for me to accept my scholarship to Washington. And what made you want to want to leave after your junior year? Did somebody tell you you were getting drafted higher than 60 or no, were you just I, ready I just, to go? I felt like there was nothing else. Like realistically, there was nothing else to, to improve my stock, like other than winning a national championship. But how yeah. realistic was that? Like I, I won three Pac-10 championships, went to the tournament three years in a row. Um, I hit that game winning. When I hit that game winning shot, that's when I knew I was out. I yeah, was yeah. Out. But I didn't. They didn't say I was gonna be 60. Like it was. It was. I remember being. Yeah, you were. It you was like in the second 30s. round. Yeah. Um, the beginning of the second was. It was probably no no later than the 40th pick is what I was gonna be, and I was fine with that. Like I was like. I know the pros and cons of everything of the decision I made, and I'm gonna go with it. But. I didn't. I didn't think I was gonna be 60. What? When did you start getting bummed out? What pick? I know the Lakers have four picks in the second round. I, I think the last pick they had maybe may may have been fifty six. And after they didn't pick me, because I worked out for them and they they said they were interested. They were they really liked me. They they needed some guards. After they didn't pick me, I didn't think I was going to get drafted. I forgot about Sacramento. That was my first workout. Yeah. So I wasn't even thinking about Sacramento. After they didn't pick me, I was like. Man, it might, I might not get drafted. That was going through my head. But then, about around the 58th pick, my agent had called me and said Sacramento would pick me with the last pick, and I, I was fine with that. What draft was that? 2011. 11. Man, I'm pretty sure the Lakers could have used a point, a younger point guard. Yeah, they, they four they picks. Two, I didn't remember they this. Two point guards: Darius Morris and Andre Gudelak. Oh, see, he does remember the people in the draft. I knew it. You, you tried to play the, oh, I don't no, remember, I remember all the people point guards. guards. Yeah, yeah, okay. They drafted them two guys. <laughs> I know that. Um, all right. Can we win the title? I'm going to use we. We? 
Yeah. Okay. Why'd you pause? I don't know. But I, I believe we can. I'm not going to say we're going to. I think you can make the finals. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you make the finals, anything can happen. Yeah. I got, I got faith in this team. I think we can. We definitely need to get out the first round first. Like, yeah. Figure, figure How about that. this? We need to win a playoff game. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Figure that out. But I'm not going to put a ceiling on this team. Like, if we bring it, we can compete with anybody in this league. I forgot to ask you about Jalen Brown. I've become quite attached to him. He's special. People yeah. are putting him in trade rumors. I'm like, get him the F out of the trade rumors. We're yeah, not trading Jalen Brown. He's good. And he's going to be really good. Like he's slowly, he works hard, right? He works hard. He's slowly catching on to how to play in the NBA game. Yeah. I mean, he got size. He's athletic, got size. He can shoot. He's a fantastic defensive player, potentially, when and he figures what, it all out. And that's what Brad and, and this organization is about. Yeah. A guy that can switch multiple positions, guard multiple positions. He's good. I, I, I love Jalen. I like that he's not afraid to shoot. He's definitely not. Normally with rookies, yeah, no, that's what I mean. Like he'll he'll play 15 minutes, but he's in the corner with four minutes left on the road. Yeah, and he'll shoot. He won't be like, oh, should I shoot nah, this? He not, just shoots. He's not it. thinking twice, and that's a good. Sometimes you're like, ah, oh, Jalen passes, but but that's a good trait to have when he's not afraid of the moment. He's super smart too, right? Yeah. No, Is he too smart? He's not that smart. Okay. And that <laughs> we joke around. You make we fun joke of around him? the team because he thinks he's so smart. He's not that smart. <laughs> what, how does somebody? <laughs> how does it even come out? On the, nah, on the he plane? might be a smart kid in the, in the in the academics and books and things we don't see. Yeah, we always joke around with him because he he walks around like he's the smartest guy in the world. Right. And does he wear not. like those glasses to make sometimes, himself seem smart? Sometimes okay. <laughs> he wears turtlenecks and stuff. <laughs> We joke around with Jalen. It, it, it's, it's all fun and games in that locker room. But, yeah, he's the fake smart guy in the locker room. Who's the funniest guy in the team? Gerald Green. Gerald Green. I he wouldn't have guessed that one. Ah, uh, hilarious. The loudest guy in the room. Really? Hilarious. So good for team chemistry. Oh, it's great. I remember we didn't have him when we played Washington when they wore the all black that game. He stayed back in Boston. He was hurt. Locker room was so quiet. Next game, he was back. You could tell when he's in the in the room. Can you explain to people why Al Horford was a good signing? Because this is another test of like, yeah. do you actually watch basketball yeah. or not, or are you just like, and like, casual like, like like we said earlier? I mean, the average fan is not going to know, but he does things you, you're not going to. That's not in the stat sheet. He his basketball IQ is so high. He he's always in the right spots. He always makes the right play. He doesn't have the score to be effective. Like last night, I think he had nine points. Yeah. Ten rebounds. Took like six assists. shots. Yeah. Like, I think how much money he signed for, people expect him to go get 30 points and 15 rebounds. And that's never been him. Right. Like, he's been a guy that's been under the radar, and he just goes about his business the way he does. And he – I mean, we're having the season we're having, it, and a lot has to do with him. He does everything for us. And I mean, a good chemistry guy, too. Good chemistry. He's not worried about – usually guys that make that type of money, they're like, man, I'm not getting my shots. I'm not getting my like, – he's, he's not said one time, I need the ball. He's, he's, a, he's a hell of a locker room guy. He's a, his character is great. He's, he's everything you ask for in a, in, a, in a really important piece to a franchise. It's a very unselfish team, which I think is by design. It is. I think they put a lot of thought into that. Yeah. And I think that I think it's one of the reasons why nothing happened to the trade deadline, which, you know, I was a little disappointed by, but at the same time, not not talking about getting a big player, but yeah. just like I mean, I thought everyone else was getting somebody. Yeah, I thought we would do something, but that says a lot. But I think they're really worried about Oh yeah. We like our chemistry, we like these guys, and we we're afraid to mess with it. They don't want to mess up. I, I I definitely understand that. We have good guys in that locker room that have no egos. Nobody's jealous of anybody, and everybody Could, just wants to win. Last question: do you, When do you think Brad Stevens becomes the president? Like, two thousand forty? I don't think he even wants to. When does he graduate from coaching and I takes over the country? One of these days. How about like tomorrow? You'd let him go to take over the country oh, now, I would let right? Him go yeah, yeah. Take over the country. I, yeah, right I, now you'd let him go. He's bigger he, than basketball. Yeah, he yeah. Could definitely go take over the country and make some things happen. 
without even smiling. See the best coach you ever had? Oh, you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. That's all right. So, no, nah, he's he's definitely yeah. He's giving me the keys to do what I want. Great out of bounds plays. Oh, out of time. Really he's, great. He's, he was doing some out-time right plays in the All-Star game where guys was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, he was breaking them out? Yeah. That was free agent recruiting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> guys was like, guys in the, and even in the locker room was like, man, he is special. I'm like, yeah. He knows his stuff. I, so I heard he gave a good speech, too, to those guys at the, like, pregame or halftime or something? He did pregame. He gave a good speech. He had a our video guy, um, Matt, put together a, a, a really good video of, highlights of all the players from like high school college and the pros yeah and lebron right after lebron's like that's i've been doing this all-star game 12 13 years and that was the best thing we've ever seen and wow. even said it too he's like it was dope it was it was it was they had highlights of when every every guy started with like john wall high school highlights then college then nba and then everybody on the team and everyone was so inspired everybody they went out and played no defense at all no defense <laughs> No defense. Somebody almost broke a sweat there. So inspired. Somebody. God, we got to fix the All Star game. We will. We will. Isaiah Thomas. Um, this was fun. Thank you. I'm really enjoying the season. Thank you. It's Thanks really fun having. to have. Listen, there's been all kinds of Celtic teams. This one's really fun to watch. It's fun even from 3,000 miles away. It's been fun to, uh, you know, the team always shows up. That's good. No, even when even when you guys can't make a shot, you're still you're still plugging away. I still feel like down eighteen. What was that game the other night? Uh, that terrible Atlanta game. Atlanta game. Yeah, just the team sucked, and it was like eight to four minutes left. You're down eighteen. I'm like, I'm not turning it off yet. I'm yeah. Just I'm not. Re I'm not That's ready how, to give up yet. It's crazy. That's how we always feel. No yeah. matter we could be down, even at halftime, coach would come in like we we've been down more than this. Right. We're gonna win the game, and like we always comebacks. feel that way. I think that's just. The attitudes we have. Yeah. All right. Good luck with the rest of the season. Thanks for having me. All right. That was Isaiah Thomas. We have Shea Serrano coming up to talk about John Wick 2. There will be some spoilers in there. So if you want to bail on the podcast right now, my feelings won't be hurt. But if you want to hear a good action hero conversation and you want to hear John Wick broken down a little bit with some, with some fun questions, I would keep listening. Quick break to talk about The Ringer NFL show. We sent the dudes to the combine. Lombardi was there. Danny Kelly. Robert Mays, Kevin Clark. Free agency is coming up this week. The Ringer NFL show is on fire right now with all the football talk you need. And also check out theringer.com this week because we're going to be unveiling Mike Lombardi's series on video of how he would fix every single NFL team. Oh, yeah. It's going to be like Name That Tune. Remember Name That Tune where they were like, I can name that song in five, five notes. I can name that song in four notes. Well, if you're over 40, you remember Name That Tim because it was a popular show. But they used to have that show. Lombardi's going to do that for every NFL team. He can fix the Patriots in five moves. He can fix the Browns in seven moves. So get ready for that. That's going to be on the ringer.com. All right, right now, speaking of the ringer, Shea Serrano. All right, as promised, the John Wick 2 conversation that you've been waiting for for your entire life. Making his first appearance, losing his virginity. On the BS podcast, Shea Serrano. <laughs> how are you, Shea? What is up? I, don't I am fantastic. I don't know how you haven't been on the podcast before, but it's a massive error, and I apologize because... I I look at it every week, and I see the name of the person you have on there, and I just say, man, fuck that guy. I'm better than that. Every time. Every time I say it. <laughs> well, we're so going to fix I'm, that. I'm happy I found him in. So, uh, well, first of all, I should mention that I listened to you on the Ringer NBA show with Chris Vernon on Friday, and you talked a big game about the Spurs, and then about about your favorite team, and then about 15 minutes in, you had a moment of weakness, and you caved, and you basically just admitted that the Rockets were better, and that you hated LaMarcus Aldridge, and it was an incredible podcast moment. I don't know if a lot of people even heard that, but you quit on your team. No, I did not quit on my team. I've been very on the record against LaMarcus since the trade. And also, I think the Rockets are better. That don't mean I like them, but I just think I'm reverse jinxing it. It's like a super reverse jinx. I'm trying to put it out in the universe. All right. I, you know I appreciate reverse jinxes. Let's talk about John Wick. We have five questions okay. we're going to hit. Question number one, is it okay to take your kids to John Wick too? Because 
I took my son last night. He had not seen John Wick one. My son is nine years old. I feel like he's pretty advanced from a movie watching thing to the point that now it's like it's too late. It's too late to protect him. He's seen too many horror movies. He's watched too many things on YouTube that we didn't realize he watched. And I was just like, I want my son to like action movies. I want him to get into the Fast and Furious franchise. I want to watch The Fugitive with him. There's all these movies I want to bang out. I think he's ready. I'm throwing him into John Wick 2. A little like how the Celtics are playing Jalen Brown in crunch time now. Just giving, it, giving him the start and see how he reacts. And it was the greatest two hours of his entire life. What did your kids think? You know, I, I made that same mistake. I took my – we skipped school. This is how bad of a parent I am. I, I was supposed to drop the boys off at school. We pulled up, and it was Friday. I said, you know what? You guys want to go see – they'd already seen the first one. I said, you want to go see part two? Yeah, Daddy, let's go. We went. Now, I've got the twins with me, boy A and boy B. Boy A is a much more emotional kid, so he was the only one I was worried about. Boy B, I knew he was going to be straight no matter what. Right. And we go and we watch it, and I thought everything was fine. But this was when it came out. So it was like a couple weeks ago. And boy B, he hasn't said a single word. Or boy A hasn't since. Like he just won't talk anymore. He won't do his homework because he didn't want to pick up a pencil. It was a disaster on that part. Boy B is straight. We went, Bill, listen, we went, we, did, we went to a birthday party. This was like two years ago. And I've got the twins with me. It's a laser tag birthday party. So they're separating like parents on one team, kids on the other team. So... A and B are on the other side. And I tell them, like, y'all stick together because it's big and it's dark in here and whatever. They're, like, eight at the time. And we go in there, and I'm walking around with my gun, like, hunting these kids, and my buzzer just starts buzzing. And I look, and there's nobody there. I don't see anybody, though, not a single person. And then B, boy B, comes crawling out of the shadows, and all he says is, got you, daddy. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, he just... <laughs> Seal Team Six to me, and so he does. There's no brother around. I said, "Hey, where's your, where's your brother?" I said, "Stick together." And I'll never forget this. He looked me right in my eyes, and this is what he said. He said, "I'm on my own now." And then he just left. He just crawled back away. He said, "I'm on my own now," and then was gone. And I saw a later. He's crying, just holding his gun up in the air, like at the beginning of fucking Saving Private Ryan. Like he doesn't know what to do, and B is just picking off parents left and right. He was fine at John Wick too. The other one is a disaster. No, the answer is no. We don't take your kids to see John Wick too. Yeah, I think that was my reaction too. As my as I'm all about the father son bonding. I, I just feel like anything that is gonna be like leaves my son going, Dad, that was great. I love you. You're the best. You're my hero. <laughs> is, is my goal. So we left, right. and he was just like, "That was the greatest." Let's go home and watch John Wick one. And then he started trying to pull me into that arm bar somersault move that John Wick does when he kept taking everybody's gun. And he almost yeah, dislocated yeah, my yeah. elbow. And there's a hundred people around and he's, he's fake shooting at me. And I'm like, so we had to have the conversation. Like you can't go into school tomorrow and pretend you're John Wick, right? You're not going to do that. Right. He's like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. But I, I'm, I'm a little worried that, uh, I don't know. I'm a little worried. <laughs> it might've been a, a bad good, idea. A yeah, a good way to figure out if it's a bad idea is at the end of it, if your kid is fake shooting at you, then yeah. you know you made a mistake. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's how you know. Here's the thing. There's so many terrible parents out there that I'm not going to be judged. I still feel like I'm in the upper percentile, even if even if my kid gets kicked out of school today because he puts somebody in our bar and tries to take their pencil. He, The pencil scene... I, I don't think I've oh ever seen him. Oh my god! Yeah, I don't think I, he was out of his mind. I it just, it's so good. John Wick Two is even better than I was hoping it would be, which is the highest that, possible praise. Yeah, it was fantastic. When that scene happened, I'm sitting next to B. Uh, we were doing the thing like when you see somebody do a big dunk in a game where you're like shoving the other guy. Like that's <laughs> right. what we're doing during the during the. We're so we were so fired up. Oh, man. It was great. It was a great movie. You know, it's interesting. There's been a lot of sequels, right? Especially with action movies. There's just been a shitload of them. That one, I think, mastered the element of, all right, here's everything that worked in the first movie and every reason we liked the yeah. first movie, and we're blowing it out. We're just going exactly much bigger budget, much more ambitious, better actors. We're just going the whole way. Like, Ian McShane is in it, the guy from Deadwood. I think, uh -huh. who was the old guy in the first one? It wasn't nearly as good of an actor as Ian McShane. 
Oh, I don't even remember yeah, him yeah. because I only remember McShane now. Right. Like and, it, in my head, it's McShane in the first one. That's yeah. just how that's how good that's how good he was. Yeah, everything that they did was was better than the first time around, which was really like how do you pull that off? I John Wick two caught you off guard, and it was good that way. And then, I mean, John Wick one did, it. and then part two was like every single part. Like they just got a little weirder. They opened up that universe a little bit more. Yeah. Oh man, it was great. Don't it, take a kid though. Don't take a kid. Yeah, I would say the cutoff. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to be judged. That's fine. Judge me. Judge me. <laughs> it's going to be. It's all good. So, all right. Here's question two. Has anyone ever had worse aim? in an action movie than all the people that tried to kill John Wick and John Wick 2. <laughs> the only one I can think of is Rambo 2 where like the Vietnamese people were within five feet of him shooting at him and just missing left and right. That's the only time I can remember worse saying by the, by the villains. Yeah, that's, I think that's probably the closest comparison. I watched this TV show called Sons of Anarchy yeah. and they get into very close range gunfight like in a warehouse. Every time they go in a warehouse it's a gunfight and they never shoot anybody else. It's really, it's really bad. You, you know what I, I was thinking about when I'm watching John Wick 2? So they do the thing where they just open it up and they say, okay, guess what? Uh, all these homeless people are actually assassins. Yeah. Everybody that you see is basically an assassin now. But when that happened, they sent like the flyer out and said, okay, there's a contract for John Wick. And people are trying to kill him over and over. And it was just like a woman jogging or a, a, a large Asian man walking by. They just happened to be it. Like they were really easy for him to kill, so maybe the like maybe the requirements to become a, an assassin aren't that high, and a, even lower than that is a henchman. So you basically just need a gun. Do you have a gun? Cool, you're in our little our little league. You know what I'm saying? Well, you need you also need to know some form of jujitsu. It seems like the karate, I guess some so. sort of you need to know a couple moves, and you need to be really fast with how you draw the gun. John Wick took. The other thing with John Wick in this movie, other than the terrible aim, is the bullets that he did take, he probably took, what, 11 in the vest he over the course bunch, of the movie? Yeah, in his, in his suit, in his suit. Yeah, he had the, the stuff sewn into the suit. Yeah. Right. He Norm took a bunch of shots. Normally when this happens in a movie or a TV show, the guy gets knocked out or the girl and they're just mm -hmm. down for five minutes. John they're, Wick. They're gasping. John Wick, it was like he was going for up for an offensive rebound and was just getting like kind of elbowed in the kidneys a little bit. He's fine. He's like still getting the rebound. He, he just nothing would sway him. And I don't know. I, I just want to know did did he figure out the best possible bulletproof vest to buy, or is he just willing to just able to take a bullet better than basically anyone we've ever seen? I don't know. I don't know the answer. I'm guessing he's just able to take that bullet because it was that very thin material. So there's gonna be. Bah, you're gonna feel it like a paintball gun. Yeah, like a paintball gun stings. Right. If you hit me with a paintball gun, like I need a break for four or five minutes. I can't even imagine what those bullets felt like. I don't know, man. He was he was, he's a badass. Yeah, I mean, you know, we knew he had a high threshold for pain because going way back to Point Break when he blows out his knee on the jump. Yeah, he was still <laughs> able still able to move a little bit. So you know, going back to that. Uh, and then the replacements, he took some big hits. So from the standpoint of Keanu having a, a high pain tolerance, I was ready for it, but uh, I never, I can't remember that. Were you, by the way, just quick side question, were you okay with Common as an assassin considering you wrote the rap book once? I was surprised at how good of an assassin he was. So when it started, he's playing an assassin in a bunch of movies. Yeah. Right? He was in um, Smoking Aces. He was in Wanted. Like he's done this role before, but he has never been that good the hand-to-hand -hand combat scene that he had when they're on the stairs and they just keep they just find like a thousand stairs to roll down yeah i that was probably that's probably the best fight scene of any movie of like the last 10 years maybe <laughs> right. like i can't think of a better one it was incredible did that he did such a such a good job was that the same fight scene that ended up with them in the subway no that's the second one the first one they're going and yeah, then yeah. they bust through into the into the hotel and they have to stop fighting. Right, right. And then they have a drink and they're just there hating each other. I and love later that so on, much. I the the part when they're in the subway fighting and John Wick is on the first floor and he and uh and Common is on the second and they're shooting at each other while they're walking <laughs> with the silencers. Yeah. Incredible. That was incredible. How does that happen? Who who whoever thought of that, they should get an Oscar. That movie should win Best Picture just for that scene. It's never been done before. Literally never been done. It was great. 
the subway fight was also extraordinary. There's so many good scenes in this movie. Like I, I don't know whether I just love action movies, but I really left the theater in all seriousness, no irony, really feeling like it was, it was going to get an Oscar best picture nomination. That's how good it was. <laughs> it, it's one of the best it, action movies of all time. It's incredible. It, <laughs> what, it, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. There are no wrong things. Every single thing was cool. There's usually one piece in the movie where you go like, mm, I don't know. Yeah. But with John Wick, the only time I felt like that was at the very, very, very end. He says, uh, send them all. I'm going to kill them all. Like he says all two times in a row. Yeah. And I thought that that was kind of like, why did they, they cut it that way? But that's just, that's a super tiny thing. It was, it was, it's phenomenal. There's no getting around that John Wick 2 is a beautiful great movie it's a it's a it's a creation of god i i it's on the short list of most satisfied i've ever felt walking out of an action movie the only other ones i can remember fast five was just uh -huh. just uh an epic achievement and the uh, uh that was the movie when when that when that franchise turned to like a serious thing like you had to start taking it that's, that's how i felt after part after after seven yeah after they do the emotional tug at the end of seven and you're yeah. like almost in tears I felt the same way then walking out of, of John Wick too. Fast Five is the one in Brazil. It's got that whole crazy mm -hmm. chase scene at the end with the, with the safe and they're dragging the safe through the streets of Brazil. And it just, it took the whole thing to another level and I danced out of the theater. Another one, uh, The Fugitive, which has really not dated badly at all. It, other than the fact that there's no cell phones, it's a movie that, pretty much could be released right now though there would probably be a scene where harrison ford crashes his plane but the oh you didn't get that joke <laughs> that's a great harrison ford joke i deserve a courtesy laugh uh but the first <laughs> the fugitive was fantastic 48 hours i think is way up there from walking out of the theater but it's it's not a long list and um no. and john wick too is on it whatever the list is so i'll have to think about it all right it's, next it's it's hard to hit that that is creed does creed count is nah. that an action movie or a nah. that? Okay. Creed's a sports movie. All right. Uh, all all right. right. Next question. Keanu. So I did the Action Hero Championship belt on Grantland in March of 2014, which was almost three years ago. And, at the, and one of the reasons for it was that Liam Neeson just owned the belt from the two Taken movies. And then he did Nonstop, right. which I thought actually was, was taken in a plane, but is very enjoyable and very rewatchable on cable. And then... Mm -hmm. Taken three was coming out when I wrote that piece. So he probably, even though taken three was a little unsatisfying, keeps the belt through taken three. John Wick right, comes right, right. out. John Wick comes out October, 2014. Keanu immediately just grabs the belt. He just takes it. That's his belt. That's his belt. When that movie comes out, no question. Has Liam it, also had the gray. He also had the gray. We can't leave that out. Uh, I No, I think we can. I think, <laughs> I, think no. we can. I think we can actually leave the gray out. No, I really think we oh, can. Oh my goodness. I, I, right. I wish right. they had spent ten million do more dollars on the on the wolf, on the special effects for the wolf. Would have been nice to have been threatened <laughs> by the wolf. Just the fear of so there's a noise out there that might be a wolf versus an actual wolf. Uh I liked it, man. I so liked it. Last two and a half years, has anyone else touched the belt or did Keanu just get to keep it until John Wick two came out? John Wick bought him a, a bunch of times. Like there was a lot of equity there for him i think they're the only people you could maybe make an argument for the rock he had furious seven in 2015 he had san andreas in 2015 and then he had central intelligence which was kind of an action movie but mostly a comedy yeah so there's an argument there uh chris pratt magnificent no. seven jurassic no. world no, no he's out he's out he's All out. right what about what about uh charlize and, and mad max does she get it for a year with that one she's fighting that's dirt pretty demons, good or sand demons with one arm like you're missing an arm charlie's was, had one arm yeah charlie's was pretty good i uh, i what think a, what about mel gibson can we do we is it just like fuck nah. mel gibson forever yeah fuck he's mel out, gibson right? forever he's out the, all right i'm with it i'm with it i think you talked me into the rock i gotta find out when san andreas came out i really like san andreas 2015 yeah, 2015 it came out it was really good it was really that's like a fun action movie to watch in the theater it was great there i mean he's not that great of an actor the scene when he gives the when he's talking about his dead daughter and there's just like nothing there 
It's just like he's, oh, you're looking at a box of cereal. Like that part, if it was Will Smith giving that monologue, it would have been incredible. But I think all the rest of the part, he fits all the requirements. I looked at the article you mentioned. You had, what, three rules for him? Yeah. Um, can he kick everyone's ass? The Rock definitely could. Would you go see any movie The Rock is in? Absolutely. And he's got a body of work over yeah. that, that span. Like, he, I think he might get it. I think that's fair. I think 2015, even though Fast 7, he's not in a lot of scenes. They they put him in the hospital, but he does. He has enough mm-hmm. to keep it going and helps out he's in the end. He's got the Statham fight. He's yeah. got the Statham fight. The it's, Rock versus Statham. Right. All right. So if The Rock gets it through 2015 up through, maybe he gets it for a year and a half, throw in a little wrestling, a little WWE action. Not a lot of action heroes could actually come into WWE. Keanu has it back. And, uh, oh, wait, we have one more question. So Keanu has it now, and he's going to have it through John Wick 3, which we're going to get to in a second. This is important, though. Did the, bu- <laughs> did the Bus Brothers see John Wick 2, which, spoiler alert, the plot is um, this, this guy hires John Wick to kill his sister so he could have his parliament seat. Little chicanery there. Did the Bus Brothers see this and say, hey, we should get rid of our sister? Maybe, maybe not murdering her like in John Wick 2, but maybe we should try to oust her <laughs> and get her seat. The math adds up. John Wick 2 came out two and a half weeks ago, and the Bus Brothers staged their coup d'etat last week. Do you think they saw John Wick 2 and got the idea? 100% that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what they were. That's, they walked out of the movie theater. They didn't say anything. They just looked at each other, and then high five. And then they called the lawyer. Like they Boom. knew what was going down Boom. after that. I, I totally agree. I think they probably talked to Keanu Reeves thinking he was a real person about about <laughs> some help with maybe. And then he's Keanu's like, I'm an actor. You know, John Wick's they just were, a character. They were at home Googling like how to get a marker. That's what they were. <laughs> we need a marker. How do we get a marker? That's, that, that was what they were doing. You're right. You're right. All right, uh, last question. What's happening in John Wick 3? It seems like he's on the run. Everyone's an assassin. And he doesn't have the uh, Continental this time. By the way, I would like to have the Continental in my life. I would like to have a, a safe place like that where I could just get protection, guns, whatever, money, gold chips, whatever I want. No, I can't get killed in the Continental. I think that's a bonus. I it's like the Continental. Bonus. But what happens in John Wick 3? You know, there... I mean, you laid it out already. He's got, he's definitely on the run. He's going to kill them all. He already told you what he's going to do. He's killing them all. Uh, I think what they're going to end up doing, though, because one of two things happens. He either has to take down the entire Assassin Federation, and that's the end of the franchise, or I really think the franchise has legs forever, like a Fast and Furious type situation. I think for that to happen, they're going to introduce a new thing. Like, there wasn't a marker in Part 1. They just they made that for two because they needed a new way to get him back in the game. So part three, they're going to figure out some sort of way where he doesn't have to kill everyone. There's there's going to be a new uh, like a, a new marker, and then he goes, "Oh, I have this now," and everyone just goes, "Oh, okay, we're done trying to kill you," and then that's it. I, I think those are the only two ways it plays out. I have a couple thoughts. I think I don't think his dog makes it out of John Wick three, and in fact, I don't think his dog oh, makes no. it out of the first twenty minutes. Yeah. He loses oh, no. something in each movie, right? So, I don't know. It's a little ominous. He's just why. I just hope no dogs are harmed during the making of John Wick Three. Is, <laughs> is my only point. And I think he, I think I think that pushes him to another level. John Wick has to have something taken from him to really become John Wick. So that's, that's one. That's probably true. All Two. Right. You know, I thought about what you said. I, I had the same conversation with myself about how many John Wicks can they have? Could this be the next Fast and Furious? Because, like, to me, Fast and Furious is one of, is a season ticket franchise for me, right? Where it's mm-hmm. like, oh, Fast and Furious is out. Up oh, season tickets for that. I'm in. Like, I just I don't even care what the plot is. Oh, it's coming out on May second. Great, I'm in. And I think exactly. John Wick is like that too. But the difference is, I don't know. Like Keanu is up there now in age. I think he's over 50. Yeah, he's born in 19... Is he really? 1964. So he's... He's 52. I had no idea. So, like, Liam Neeson can go into his 60s because he's, like, six foot three and he has, like, the legendary... He's legendarily hung. So everybody knows that. He's got good balance from his enormous Johnson. <laughs> what? Yeah, Liam, what? Uh, Liam Neeson. That's, a, that's the word in the street. 
pack and heat. How do we get the all right. It's just okay. a, it's, a, it's the legend of Liam Neeson. Who knows if it's true? But I always figured that's why he had such good balance and taken. Um, but Keanu, <laughs> Keanu, though, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Keanu, though, I think once he gets into his mid fifties, I don't know. I'm concerned. I don't know if John. I don't know. I don't want like an old geriatric John Wick. So maybe this is so, three and out. <laughs> Wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So Liam Neeson was good at karate because he had a big wiener. Like it just <laughs> great balance. <laughs> great balance. That, that, it's uh, that's is, why he had he could move, he could pivot so quickly. He was a very good central force. <laughs> uh, all right. So yeah, I think it's I I gotta go. All right. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> Shea Serrano. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, right. Thanks for coming on. What do you have coming up this week on the rigor? Uh, I got basketball column on Wednesday, and then a, a, a non-basketball thing about. I went and watched Kong, which is really great. Oh, good. Kong. Go see Kong. Yeah, you can take a kid to see that one. Oh, There's right. only one or two curse words in it, and uh, go see it. And I'm going to write about. I'm going to write about that. Basketball so you, and Kong. Your Wednesday column is called NB NB Shay. It also could yeah, have been... I don't know who came up with that. <laughs> but, oh, let me tell you, uh, Kong, they don't show his wiener in there, but he's really good at fighting. So. I, I don't I don't want to see Kong's wiener. Don't, don't flip this on me. <laughs> it's my job to pass along right. urban legends on the podcast. Did you think about calling okay. your podcast Shea B.A., or did you settle on M.B. Shea? Uh, no, that was that was Sam. Sam came up with that. Okay. thank him for that one. I was not I have any part of that. Okay. All right. Uh, well, we'll we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. Look forward to reading you on the ringer. I'm sorry I had to break the news to you about Liam Neeson, but I, th I feel like you'll be fine. And uh, and, right. and I'm glad I'll see you in our support group for parents who took their kids to John Wick too. And sure enough, I'm in. All right, see up. you. All right. Thanks to SeatGeek, our presenting sponsor. Don't forget to download the free SeatGeek app or go to SeatGeek.com. Thanks to TheBlackTux.com. They'll help you create your look or choose from tons of stylist selected outfits starting at just $95. After ordering, your suit will arrive 14 days before your event. Try it on. Make sure everything fits. If anything is less than perfect, the Black Tux will send you a free replacement right away. To get started now, visit theblacktux.com slash BS and get $20 off your purchase. Again, that's theblacktux.com slash BS. Thanks to Isaiah Thomas. Thanks to Shea Serrano. We'll be back midweek on the Bill Simmons podcast until then. <laughs>